All right, guys, let's talk PFDs. Well, I got some good news for you. PFDs has come a long way over the years from these guys right here <laughs> to these style and even these styles. All right, there's four different types of PFDs. You have your inherent kind of buoyant, uh, which is what I'm wearing right here. A lot of that foam that you, where you get your flotation from is gonna come from that foam on the inside, both on the front and back. Uh, you have your inflatables. All the flotation you're gonna get from these comes from an activated gas canister. You have a hybrid, which is gonna be a combination of the two. And then you kind of have your special purpose if for some reason you need to whistle on it or, or all kinds of different additions. But for the context of kayak fishing, we're only gonna focus on two. Your inherent, which I like to call your traditional personal flotation devices, and your inflatables, which seem to be really popular as well. Right, with the inflatables comes two options. You have manual inflation, which you just kind of pull a pull tab at the bottom, and then you have automatic inflation. I personally don't follow the logic on a manual inflated PFD. If you need a life jacket, the majority of the time it's because you're incapacitated. So having one that you need to manually inflate makes no sense to me. I don't need a life jacket whenever I can swim. I'm a really good swimmer. I swam 50.6 miles across Lake Michigan in 35 hours. I need it when I can't swim. So when I wear these, it's going to be the automatic inflation type of PFDs. There's a bunch of pros to these. Of course, it's gonna be cooler because there's not a lot of fabric on your body, especially if you fish like Texas in the middle of July. People tend to find them more comfortable. You're gonna have increased mobility, especially with fishing. Uh, you're not gonna have any type of bulk getting in your way, maybe hitting your, the bottom of your rod uh, when you're trying to cast. Sometimes that gets caught up on a bulkier type of traditional personal flotation device. Typically with these, you get increased flotation. You're gonna get anywhere from 22 to 33 pounds of flotation. This is different than the traditional, which usually only get in between 15 and a half to 22 pounds of flotation. And some would say that the advantage of the inflatables is when you're unconscious and you kind of get knocked over and fall in the water and they kind of inflate. And that is true. However, I believe that an overlooked pro of the inflatable is cold water shocks. If you get knocked over in really cold water, you are conscious. However, you go into cold water shock and you can't move your muscles and you wouldn't be able to pull that tab uh, for that manual inflation. So another good reason to have an auto inflate option. Some cons, and this is one of the big cons for me, is that if I take this off, you'll see on the back side here, right here, this is what rubs against your neck. Now on some of the nicer models, uh, you have a neoprene neck guard, but at the end of the day, if you're fishing you know, eight hours a day over the weekend or all week, that is going to be irritating to your skin. And not all are created equally. Some of your inflatable PFDs are triggered by a pressure sensor and other with dissolvable kind of stoppers on the canister. Now, if you want a really nice one that doesn't go off when you're fishing in the rain, what you're gonna look for is a hydrostatic PFD. I know that Mustang makes some really nice ones, and here's the thing, they're really expensive, but they're only going to inflate whenever submerged in four inches of water. And the problem that I have with the dissolvable stopper is essentially what happens, you get this dissolvable tablet over the canister that will rapidly disintegrate when it hits water. And the problem I have with that, and it's just per my personal opinion, if that stopper happens to get wet and starts to disintegrate a little bit year over year, and I'm out fishing in rain, I just don't want that thing blowing up on me. Also with the inflatables, you have to replace the CO2 cartridge, which is kind of nice. You can keep using it just because it goes off once doesn't mean it's done. But those things can be kind of expensive, 18 to $20 per CO2 cartridge depending on the grams that you need. So you can imagine 20, 40, 60 dollars if these things accidentally fall into the water. So keep that in mind. These are not recommended for under 16 years of age. And to be honest with you, they can be kind of risky because you just never know if they're going to work or they're going to fail. And there's always the chance that it could fail. Now I also heard that it shouldn't be used in below freezing temperatures or water because that temperature can affect the inflator's ability to puncture the CO2 cartridge. So keep that in mind. All right, so I got a warning for you. I bought these off of Amazon thinking I was good to go, uh, but I was not. In fact, I pulled up, I believe it was Father's Day weekend, had this thing and this game warden popped out of thin air. You know, you know how that works. <laughs> and so they came up and said, hey, gotta check out your inflatable PFD. And she was looking through it, looking on the back. She's like, you unfortunately are not going to be able to use this. And I'm like, oh, why not? Because it is not USCG approved. And I was like, oh, bummer. It was really cool. She let, actually let me use her United States Coast Guard approved PFD, which I just shoved it behind my seat at that time because I wasn't wearing them, which I should have been. But luckily, I had another one at home that I picked up through a deal. And as you can see here, 
it is United States Coast Guard approved, so I can wear this one when I'm out on the water. So just keep that in mind. If you're on Amazon looking for some type of PFD, just make sure it is US Coast Guard approved because the game warden will check. All right, since the US Coast Guard is a maritime law enforcement agency, they're the ones who determine whether or not a personal flotation device is approved or not based off its use and its buoyancy. Now the old system divided personal flotation devices into types. You guys might remember this, type one, two, three, four, and five. However, in 2014, they changed it from types to performance levels. These performance level numbers are 50, 70, 100, and 150. Performance level 50 is designed for smooth waters, for kayaking, for fishing, and not for weak swimmers. Performance level 70 is just like the old type 3s. They're not designed for keeping the wear safe for long and uncalm waters. Next you got your performance level 100s. These are going to be your old type 1s uh, made more for open water and light waves. And your performance level 150s are going to be your offshore deep water jackets. So what you're looking at is the lower the number on the performance level that you're going to find more mobility, more style, and more comfort. And of course, the higher the number, you're going to have more flotation and stability. To give you a little example, this is my NRS Raku. This has the performance level of 70. And since I have it out, let's go ahead and talk about these traditional PFDs and the pros and the cons. And one of the pros is it's instant. You don't have to worry about this thing inflating or not. As soon as you're in the water is the instant it starts working. And to be honest with you, super low maintenance, kind of put it on, buckle it in, zip it up, and you are good to go. Now, the beauty of these traditional PFDs is that there's a lot of storage to have, especially for kayaking. There's just not a lot of real estate on your fishing kayak. So to have the things you use all the time, maybe the lures you're going to use for that day, some of the hooks you commonly use, having your pliers here. I have my NRS safety knife just easily accessible here, in and out. A lot of pockets on this bad boy. I can tether my phone, I can put my sunglasses, I can put a walkie-talkie, all available to me right here. Now there are multiple cons on these guys. I've read through a lot of reviews and number one con that people have is that it is bulky. Another con that a lot of people have is that it can get hot, especially during the summer, because you have essentially a lot of insulation going up against your skin on the front and up around your neck on the back, depending on how your PFD is formed. And one thing that I absolutely despise on a lot of the kayak fishing PFDs is the high back float. And so you have to have 15 and a half to 22 pounds of flotation. And so they got to put that somewhere. So that's why you kind of got the bulky front here. But on the back, a lot of times they have these high back floats. So they got to put a lot of that foam up behind your neck. And I hate these styles with the fire of a thousand suns. That's why you don't see it on the back of mine. But the reason I don't like it because I have a P127 kayak right here, my Bonafide, and then I have a Native Slayer Propel 10, and they are both pedal drive kayaks. And so this is why I believe the NRS Raku is perfect. Because what happens is whenever you're pedaling your kayak, uh, you're in a recumbent position. And kind of when you're leaning back a bit to kind of pedal while you're fishing, a lot of times those high back supports behind your neck is pushing your head forward because they're hitting the top of your seat. That's why I don't like them because I solely fish right now with pedal powered kayaks. So keep that in mind. If you have a pedal powered kayak, you might not like that high back float up behind your neck. So now let's talk sizing. Let's say you get a deal on Facebook Marketplace. You not only get a fishing kayak, but you get a paddle and a fish finder and a PFD. Well, if that size is not designed for your body type, it might not do what you need it to do for you in that time of need, which is save your life. All right, so what you want to do is when you try that on, you kind of tighten it up. If you lift up on the shoulders and this thing goes above your chin, well, keep tightening it up. If you keep doing it, have someone lift up on the shoulders. And if it goes up over your mouth or past your chin, well, you have a fishing kayak PFD that is too large for you. On the flip side, if your PFD is too small, it may not support your weight. Now, keep in mind, if you're one of the gals out there, I got some good news for you. They have PFDs that are designed for your body structure. Also something to keep in mind that some PFDs are only approved when they're worn. So make sure to check with your state, your provincial, or even your local kind of statutes and requirements for use and wear. Another question you might have is how much flotation do you need in a PFD for you personally. And although you could try to do the calculation, it'd be complicated to figure out you know, your body weight, how much water is in your body, and so forth and so on. Uh, or you can just go by the USCG recommendation, which is in between 15 and a half to 22 pounds of flotation. So at the end of the day, you want a PFD that fits like a glove, doesn't chafe, it doesn't get in your way when you're fishing, and provides the safety you need in order for you to get back to your family that night and fish another day. Now, I've referenced this NRS Raku all throughout my video, so if you want to take a deeper dive with me, I'm going to hop into the pockets and kind of show you the composition, the design, and why I believe it's the best personal flotation device if you're a pedal-powered kayaker. You can check out that video right there.